Welcome, my magical friends, to another edition of Crafting with me, Indiana Jones. Today is a very special day because it's Hocus Pocus Day. Hocus Pocus 2 is released by Disney, and I hope you check out the movie, but more importantly, check out this wonderful collaboration playlist of Hocus Pocus-inspired DIYs. And let's have a throwback to a time when I, myself, became Winifred Sanderson. Let's have some fun. <laughs> now we shall do something to make the home festive for all Hallow's Eve. And we need, darling Sarah, we need something from the garbage. Oh. We need a bottle. <laughs> Did you find it? Is that a bottle? There was a boy inside. There was a boy inside. But he escaped. Oh. oh. I usually oh. this has soda in it. It's two <laughs> liters, I understand. Two <laughs> liters. Yes. Okay, we have a bottle. Next, we need a dead crow. Crow, 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 crow. Look what I found. Woo. It's lunch. Ah. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, well, we'll make it into a decoration. Now kill it. It's dead. <laughs> <laughs> now, you shall see the magic. So this is from a place called Dollar Tree. Ooh. It's where dollars fall. <gasps> the tree of dollars. Mm. So you shall put that little one there. And then I have some moss, some deathly moss. <laughs> and then we have this plastic bottle and a sharp implement. So we take the sharp wow. implement and we find where we had made the hole before because it's easier that way. And I found it. Oh, good. <laughs> so we cut. We cut. Ooh, okay. I can cut. Okay, yes, please. We don't want blood. <laughs> this does no. not call for blood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, this is being difficult. Ah, there we go. Now I punch it. Yes, do your magic, Sarah. Do your magic. Ooh. Okay. Now, usually, you would take. Oh, look at that. Now, usually, you take all this nasty bookiness off with something called glue on or goo gone or anything Goof else. Off. Goof off anything or just like keep like. I don't know, messing with it, but we don't have time for that because we have magic! Ha ha! Huzzah! <laughs> See? Wow, it's that's all so nice fast. and clean. And then you put a cork on it. Oh, What's a cork in it? Yeah. You, you, there's some people that need I to put know. a cork in it. So we I put a cork you. in it, and then you get this, this stuff called raffia. And raffia. you just round it all around, and then you throw it because this is magical. And then you take this, and look! We have a wicked stand, a black wicked stand. And if you want to learn how to make this stand for your own from the Tree of Dollars, <laughs> to go to my Mad Lab Scientist episode and you shall see it. So, yeah. go sister, yes. go ahead, put some moss, put some moss in there. Just Ooh. spread it around. <laughs> and you shall take the dead crow and put it in the middle. Oh, my Ooh. lunch. You shall put it in the middle. <laughs> and you shall that. see. You could buy this anywhere for tens Ooh. and twenties of dollars, but we don't have that money because no. we're poor witches. And then you just <laughs> and then you enclose oh. him, and you can use it. You see how glorious, Ooh. or you could use like a small skeleton, or oh. or a tree with bats, anything you like, and you have your own little bell jar. <laughs> Today, this is a special collaboration that I am hosting, yes, for wickedly fun ideas for Hocus Pocus and Hocus Pocus 2. I have so many wonderfully, wickedly fabulous crafty friends that are sharing their own love and ideas for Hocus Pocus. Well, that was fun, but let's get some spells on. Let's try some Ichida Kapita Malika Mystica, shall we? For this project, I'm using a Crafter Square circle. Actually, no, it's a wood round from Dollar Tree Crafter Square. And this wonderful design that I created on Canva and have it available to you in my description below. Now I'm using yellow, orange, and white to create a mystical, magical harvest moon. And then I'm going to use chalkboard black paint and edge all around it with just a one inch um, edge paintbrush, I guess. Yes, that's it, a one inch paintbrush. So it goes all the way around and you'll see how magical that round becomes in just a moment. 
Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write with chalk, um, like a chalk pen, the Ichida Kapita Malika Mystica all the way around as the inside of the Binks image has the full uh, spell. Now, I understand Kapita might be spelled incorrectly. I'm not sure. I don't know the spell by, by heart, but it still looks cool. And then all I did was in between the, the words, I included these mystical runes, which are just little designs that I created, little stars and little circles. I thought it added to, you know, the magical image. And then all I did was Mod Podge that Binks image and we're done. For this next craft, I am using my wood book, but you can use any kind of book box that you have. Now, I am also using Cricut, but you can also print this out on parchment paper, on printable parchment paper, and print it all in black with the writing in white. And that way you'll be able to see the magic as it appears. I found my parchment paper at Hobby Lobby, but you can find it at most, um, most craft stores. Now all I'm doing is making sure that it sizes up into my book box. Again, this is my wooden book box that I received. And now I'm going to use this cutout that I created through my joy, my Cricut Joy. Thank you again to Pam for making this possible. And here I am just transferring this wonderful spell to the page for my spell book. I haven't seen anybody else do this, so I hope this is original. I hope this is unique for you to see. And all I'm doing is, again, transferring the cutout, the Cricut cutout, to that beautiful page. And now I'm just embellishing with some of these stickers that I also found at the Dollar Tree. I just thought it added a little bit more. Then I'm going to add this to my book box. Now, I'm using hot glue because I know I can remove the hot glue from the wood. It's not going to be permanent. But I wanted to be able to make sure that it stayed in place. And what I'm going to use now are these color changing votive candles. Now I couldn't find the actual votive candles, but I did find these flowered votive candles that had the same effect. It says light changing or color changing lights. And you can also use just plain votive candles. It would just be an orange glow that would come through the page. But there you have it and wait until the final reveal. Now here's a fun indie quickie and you will love this. All you need is a doormat from the Dollar Tree and some acrylic paints and then uh, any kind of sealant that you can use if you're going to use this for the outside. I'm using this in my kitchen so I'm not too worried about it getting messed up because again I'm just going to use it indoors in my kitchen and I would suggest the same to you. Now all I'm doing here I am literally just painting the hair styles from each of the witches to represent Winifred, Sarah, and Mary. And I'm not tracing it. I'm just like, hey, you know, I'm just painting it, doing the best I can freehand, looking at, you know, an example, I think, that I found uh, online of what their silhouettes looked like. But this is it. This is just the witches' silhouettes. I love this style. And I think it's such an easy design that you can incorporate into anything that you have in your home. And especially a doormat is very useful and so inexpensive because all I spent was $1.25 for the doormat itself and the paints that I already had on hand. And there I'm finishing up Sarah. Now with Mary, I did use this purple and I had to go back and use a lighter purple because when this dried, you couldn't even see the color of it. And that's it. There you have your own little Hocus Pocus mat. Probably saved yourself a good 10 to $15 by creating it yourself. And again, I'm using a paint pen. And there you have it. I hope you enjoy it and try it yourself. Once again, I have to thank my friend Pam for this wonderful Cricut Joy. And forgive the little squealing noises in the background. That's my little kittens fighting with each other to be with me on my on my lap so all I did was create this hocus pocus sign I had this beautiful sign from believe it or not Hobby Lobby when it was like 80 or 90 percent off and there you have it hocus pocus now I could have stopped there but I found this wonderful galvanized witch's hat and I know that the Sanderson sisters don't wear witch's hats but I you know you gotta have it for Halloween 
painted it black and yes i added some black glitter all over the hat now to add the hat to the sign instead of just adding it directly to the sign i did add a tumbling block as you can see right there or a jenga block whatever you want to call it and i glued the hat onto the jenga block and you're wondering well why did you do that and i said because i wanted some space to add one of those votive candles that change colors and you'll see it in the final reveal Now, any hocus pocus or witchy inspired decor needs to have some kind of potion bottles, but you've seen potion bottles, I'm sure you have, in so many different ways. So I wanted to come up with something different. So using this <clears throat> large decanter of magical potions itself, I am putting in there a little bit of glitter, a little bit of dragonfly uh, paint from Mod Podge, not Mod Podge, from the Plaid family of products, and some Mod Podge as well, and some water. And all I did was swirl it around in the bottle. Now I'm taking these fairy lights and I'm doing something wild with it. I'm putting some glitter down on this parchment paper and adding some hot glue because I wanted to create like some flames. I don't know if this makes sense to you. I just wanted to do something different and have some light in it, not just in the bottle. So here I'm adding the lights, those flickering fairy lights to the glue. And I'm going to build up on that, adding some more glue on top and some more glitter as you can see here i know it's glitter but you know sometimes you have to sacrifice to make something beautiful so here i keep adding more glue more glitter and now another set of lights so that we can start creating the beautiful green flame that is going to emanate from our large potions bottle this was so much fun and i hope you try this for yourself if you do please be careful with hot glue Please use either popsicle sticks or any kind of sticks so you don't stick your fingers directly in the glue or use low temp glue. Here's my last flame that I created and I stretched it out a little bit and now all I did was put some lights inside the bottle itself and of course the flames coming out of the bottle as you can see here. And of course we had to have some drippings so using the hot glue once again and some glitter we're going to have some drippings on the side. I did add a little more embellishments to this by adding a ribbon and a wax seal. But wait till the final reveal. Again, I couldn't do any kind of hocus pocus projects without including a spell book. So here for this spell book, I'm just using a box I got from the Dollar Tree and the vinyl, the, the cuttable vinyl that you can get from the Dollar Tree as well in brown and white. With the white, I'm creating the pages. With the brown, I'm going to create the book cover. Isn't this perfect? Now again, what's special about this book? It's actually going to become a purse. Here, using some glue and twine, and I'm not using hot glue, I'm actually using that permanent cement from the Dollar Tree because hot glue will not work on this um, not for too long. You can use it for to hold it in place, but to keep it forever, I would use the uh, cement. And all I'm using is some twine to create those wonderful stitches that you see all over the front of the book. But not only that, I'm using this Pebo, it's called P-E-B-O, and what it creates is a dimensional paint. And what I'm going to be creating is the actual stitches. And you can find this in my Amazon craft store. And I am creating the stitches one by one, as you can see this. It, it took, see here, it was painstaking, but I think it was worth it in the end. Look at how beautiful the effect is. And I think it stands out. I could have sewn it by hand, but I didn't want to create any holes on the cover because if it got wet or anything like that, I just didn't want holes to go through the cover. Now I'm going to start creating all the embellishments using my foam clay. So here are the snakes that also appear on the front cover of that boo it's so much fun and it was so much fun to watch hocus pocus 2 yes i already watched it and i loved it so here i'm creating the pupil for the eye instead of using just um an eye that you can find at the dollar tree i decided to create my own eye using the dragonfly paint and other paint and using this little piece of glass that you can find at dollar tree as well it's one of those glass fillers and a little styrofoam ball also from the dollar tree and look at that it's already so spooky looking to create your own eye i always wanted to create my own purse now 
Here, I'm using that foam clay again to create the skin around the eye, and now I'm aging the purse. I do add fingers on the on the back edge, I forgot to show that, but I do age the purse with some acrylic paint, all different colors. And I did the same for the pages because it was just going to be blank white and it wasn't going to look right. So here I'm creating the pages for my pocketbook, get it, huh, pocketbook purse, whatever. Now I'm also adding this wonderful silver metallic paint from the plaid and the folk art and plaid family of products. Now I'm using that cement to glue on the eye to the spell book. And again, excuse my kittens. They're fighting with each other at my feet. That is so fun to have them around. And uh, so, yes, I'm using that cement once again to glue the eye. Now for the outside of the eye, the frame, I'm actually using that cameo that I used in my last video, my cameo mold, and I created this frame for around the eye, which is perfect, as you can see there. I painted it, and once again, I'm using that cement from the Dollar Tree to add it to my cover. <laughs> They're very active, my kittens, today. So there you have it, and then all I had to do was add some mag magnetic clutches to the clutches clutches to the top and I of course I'm going to use some cement glue to add my straps so I can carry my purse around and now the deliciously fabulous final reveal I want to thank my very sweet friend, Lizzie, for creating this beautiful diamond portrait of the Sanderson sisters. Something else to add to my wonderful Hocus Pocus decor collection. Thank you again, Lizzie. You are incredibly talented. I hope you enjoyed my collection of Hocus Pocus 2 inspired DIYs and crafts. And if you did enjoy this, remember there's many, many more ideas on my collaboration playlist. I can't thank everyone enough for being part of this playlist. There are so many wonderful crafters, creators, and most especially very sweet friends that have joined me in the celebration of Hocus Pocus, Hocus Pocus 2, and of course, Halloween. Thank you once again for stopping by and spending some time with me here on my channel. And I hope that you are inspired not only by my Hocus Pocus inspired DIYs, but by all of my friends who have joined me on this playlist. I can't thank you enough for joining me. As I always say, stay safe, be kind, God bless each and every one of you. And remember to live the adventure. And for more adventures, subscribe so you know exactly when I come up with more fun things to do. Come back again.